Well, welcome everybody to the online program for the alumni of the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, BC. And last time on the program, we were talking about theories of addiction. So some people think that we know everything there is about addiction and, oh, no need for more research and all that. But in fact, uh, all the hot shots in the field actually say we're still a bit baffled. At any rate, they've developed all these theories, which, as we mentioned last time, were often stumbling over themselves because they said different things about what an addiction is. At any rate, based on these theories, uh, a lot of uh, therapists have developed uh, treatments. So on this program, uh, we'll look at probably four of the more famous treatments based on these theories. And it's interesting that each theory produces a whole bunch of different treatments. So if there are like, uh, I think I've counted up to like 46 or 47 official theories of addiction, and each of them has created several treatments. So you can imagine well over 100 official treatments for addiction, right? That are used around the world. So we'll look at four of them. And just to give you a sense of uh, what people are doing from a scientific point of view. So the most famous uh, theory of addiction, at least in Canada and the United States, not necessarily the best, but the most famous, is this idea that addiction is a medical issue. That, uh, and the most famous one being, of course, it's a disease. This is even on the website of probably the most famous uh, medical people involved in the addiction field called, in Canada, the Canadian Society of Addiction Medicine, and in the United States, the American Society of Addiction Medicine. And they, they define it right up front and they say, addiction is a brain disease. Okay, it used to be just a disease, by the way, but in 2011, they made it official it was a brain disease. And it's now on the website, it's the official definition. Okay, so if, if addiction is a brain disease, then the treatment has to be something for the disease, right? So treatments, this is, uh, you may have heard of this, there's a lot of uh, medications uh, that are, have been developed and are being developed to help people with this brain disease. Uh, some of the more famous ones are acamprosat, uh, buprenorphine, suboxone, and some, now generally those are for opiate addictions, and uh, uh, acamprosat has actually been used for uh, alcohol. And then uh, some others uh, they're developing because uh, apparently the opiate addicts have all the uh, medication. But anyway, they're developing some for cocaine addicts and everything. So a medication would be one thing because it's a brain disease, right? So we're going to help the brain deal with this disease. Uh, they even have uh, vaccines now, right? Now it's not so much a disease thing. Well, I guess a vaccine and disease work together. But they, uh, I kid you not, by the way, this is all written up. Uh, it's even, I've even seen it in Time magazine, I think. Uh, one of those popular magazines. So they make this vaccine and the idea behind it is you vaccinate a, presumably a kid or something and then... They, they're not supposed to be able to get high if they do you know, whatever the drug is, heroin or alcohol or things. Uh, they've actually uh, done clinical trials, these official tests on it. Some of them are ready to go. Just an interesting way of uh, looking at the brain disease uh, issue. And they, uh, I think the original idea was they're going to vaccinate everybody in the United States or something, but I'm pretty sure the human rights people <laughs> had something to say about that one. At any rate, uh, because it's a brain disease and the problem is the effect of the drugs on the brain, another tactic and probably the most famous one is uh, these, this idea of uh, whatever you do, just don't use drugs. So anything that promotes that is useful. So for example, Alcoholics Anonymous would be a very useful tool to have in your toolbox because they promote abstinence. Okay. And so anything that promotes abstinence is a good thing. The fact that Alcoholics Anonymous, Bill Wilson, the, uh, the uh, driving force behind AA, said that, well, this is a spiritual disorder and the way to recovery is through the spiritual principles leading to the spiritual awakening. Well, you know, it's a disease, right? So, yeah, you know, the spirituality stuff is cute, but really what we need is abstinence. So anything that promotes abstinence and all this other, maybe the spirituality stuff or, you know, family systems, family therapy, and all that other stuff. It really doesn't matter because it's actually a disease, okay? 
So that is the, uh, those are some techniques that, that we use if we believe that it's truly a disease, right? That we, because whatever we do, we have to keep you from doing the drugs because the actual problem is the drug hitting the brain, right? It's a, and it, and it hijacks the brain. Okay, well, that's it uh, for this time around, and we'll be back uh, next time with another of these mainstream theory uh, treatments.